I'm just here today. Oh, it's wobbling a bit. Here today to share some crafty tips. So I get messages all of the time about what products I use. So I thought I'd come and do a quick video to share some of my top tips. So where I'm making folios and albums, I use black cardstock. So black, same as shoes, coats, and most of the clothes in my wardrobe <laughs> will go with anything. So it doesn't matter whether you're using something that's pink or blue or orange or yellow, it will always match with black. You don't have to worry about having loads of different colours of cardstock. Also, if you use black, you don't have to ink the edges. It saves you a job. Now, I always buy um, 12 by 12 for making folios and albums just because they're slightly larger projects. So you can't always make them from an A4. But I do share some that are made from A4. So I use this card here. It's Craft UK Limited. Um, now, I get this from my local range in the UK, which if you're not in the UK, you won't have it. Um, if you're not in the UK, you might not be able to get this card. But the tips about why I like this card will still be relevant to you. So here I get 20 sheets, 12 by 12, 225 GSM. You don't really want to go any thicker than that when you're making folios and albums. Otherwise, you're going to have lots of unnecessary bulk. And also, the thicker the card, the harder it is to get a nice, neat, crisp score when you've, you're scoring and folding. So, um, yes, 225 GSM. This costs me 4 99 okay? So, 4 99 for cardstock is quite cheap. So, you might think, oh, well, it'll be a bit rubbish. Trust me, it's fantastic. When you score it and fold it, it doesn't split. If you score it and fold it and you've folded it the wrong way and you want to fold it a different way, it still doesn't split. I've folded and folded and folded and this card does not split. Okay, it's really, really good. I do believe, and this is not a paid promotion, I do believe you can also get it from Craft Stash UK um, website. Um, so just type Craft Stash UK um, and it'll come up. It's a, a UK-based crafting site that sells lots and lots of things. Um, and the postage is not bad and everything I've had from there's always been good. I've done bits and bobs of work from them. For them but like i say this is not a paid promotion so craft uk limited is is not part of craft stash uk this is an independent company but they are a wholesale company so you will more than likely only get this at retail okay so that's what i use um now when i'm doing cards you've seen some cards on my channel if i'm making 3d cards and when you're making 3d cards then they add stability then I use this, which is Navigator. Okay, this is a 200 GSM ultra smooth um, cardstock. It's beautiful for stamping on as well. So I use that when I make, if I make, if I want to make a box or a shadow box or a um, 3D card that's going to be sturdy because of the fold. If I was just making a general folding card, then I wouldn't use this because it wouldn't be thick enough. But I don't make those kind of cards because those kind of cards to me are a little bit basic. Um, so that's the card stock. Now, the next most asked question is my glue. I used to swear by Fabri-Tac and Beacon, but I got very frustrated about how Fabri-Tac, if you use it, you're shaking, shaking, shaking the bottle and it get bung, gets bunged up down the nozzle. So I have gone back to using Colol, a thousand millimetres. Okay, you work out how much is in a bottle of Fabri-Tac and this cost me fourteen ninety nine, and I will then decant it into a smaller bottle. That happens to be an old Fabri-Tac bottle. <laughs> now, Colol is a solvent-based glue. It dries clear. It works exactly the same as Fabri-Tac. It will glue your paper, your card, your lace. I've even glued metal embellishments with it. It glues everything. It's just a little bit thinner and it takes slightly longer to dry than Fabri-Tac, but not much longer, just slightly, and that's just because it's a bit thinner. But because it is thinner, you d I don't have to shake this bottle to get my glue out. I just tip it up and it comes out. Now, it will collect around the rim, around the nozzle, but it doesn't get bunged up down the inside. I'm not having to stick pokey tools and needles in it, etc., to stop it from getting bunged up or to unblock it. It's not necessary with Colal. Okay, now whilst we're on the 
subject of glue i want to show you two glues of shame and i have these to show people what not to use tacky glue um anita's tacky glue anything pva based is going to be high in water content things like fabri tac and colol are solvent based which means they're in low in water content high water content glue such as these will make your paper wrinkle okay you'd have to use it very sparing like for it to not warp and wrinkle your paper cheap glue is a false economy this is still budget friendly but it's not cheap like pva don't waste your money on PVA glue because it will spoil your project and then you'll be disappointed, okay? Also, some PVA glues, if you've got um, seepage, when you wipe it away, you'll get a black mark. Um, with this one, if you get seepage, if you rub it, it goes like when you're using a rubber or an eraser if you're from America. And if you rub it, it will rub away like little shards of rubber and you can wipe it away. It's fantastic. These glues of shame don't use them so now i want to talk about trimmers now i have two trimmers that i use and i like my most favorite is my stamping up trimmer now i've also got the fiskers <coughs> which this one is the one with the metal wire in the it's got like a metal wire there can you hear it pinging um for some reason this trimmer I cannot cut straight with it. I like it. I like the fact that you can lock that so that this doesn't flap about. I like everything else about it, but I can't, can't cut straight with it. My Stampin' Up trimmer, I've never had any problems cutting straight. The only problem I've ever experienced is with the blades and getting the blades. And they're expensive to replace, um, you know, because postage from Stampin' Up it is not always the best. Unless you've got a demonstrator local to you that can get them to you for, you know... Um, sharing the cost of the postage so i now use the vasen blades let me show you the packaging and then you can there we go uh vasen creative i use these and i get them on amazon and it fits perfectly i believe the hobbycraft own brand blades fit as well i've not tried them i don't know if they're good they're never in stock they're useless but these blades the vas and creative are fantastic and they cut like a knife through butter now let me explain why this trimmer is a good trimmer um as opposed to cheaper ones that you could buy vas and creative also do this trimmer and it's a lot cheaper it's the same model but the reason why this trimmer is a good model first of all importantly let me just get something to show you. It's got what I will call a butt bar. So when you slide your paper up, there's a lip here. Okay, it stops your paper moving about. It's very, very important when you're paper crafting. And when you pull the arm out, it extends all the way up to 17 inches. Okay, and that also has a butt bar. Can you see the lip? Really important so that you can... Put your paper and you know that that is straight so you're not going like that before you cut. Really important. Another thing I love about this trimmer is it's got the 16th of an inch increments. And I'm not selling it. I'm not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It's also got inches and centimetres. Okay. And it's also got um, inches down the cutting area. Down the, this bit. I can't think of the technical name for that at the moment so that's why this is a good trimmer okay now scoreboards let's talk about scoreboards i've got two scoreboards and i've had them for years i've got the martha stewart scoreboard which one of my friend very kind friends bought me a very long time ago and i do have the stamping up one just because i used to be a demonstrator and i got it for not basically for nothing um now you will see there's two things in common with these scoreboards first of all the 12 by 12 um i don't really see the point in these little tiny little tiny little scoreboards and sometimes you get them free in magazines i don't see the point of them unless you're um maybe going to crafty retreats they might be useful you know so that you're not carrying a great big thing about or you're traveling or going on holiday then fair enough have it as a backup but as a main scoreboard and um, these are the best and again the secret is the book bars cheap scoreboards won't have a lip here and a lip here 
And these are really important because it gives you a starting place to make sure that your paper is straight. It also gives you something to get hold of there so you can keep hold of the paper and make sure it stays straight whilst you're scoring. Really, really important. Um, now, these tools aren't necessarily the cheapest, okay? The Stamping Up trim Trimmer is not the cheapest on the market and these scoreboards are not the cheapest on the market. However, there is an old saying, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Always buy a decent tool uh, for crafting. I've had this scoreboard for about 10 years and I've had this one for maybe six and I'll never need to buy another one. They're not going to break. They're solid hard plastic. So I never ever need to buy another. However, if I'd have bought a rubbish one to start with without the book bar, then I'd have to I'd end up going and buying another one. So don't always go for the cheapest option when it comes to craft tools. Go for the best that you can get. Look at reviews, think about the uh, the features of them and how you might not realize how important that is until you come to start um, scoring and, and making things it's such an important feature to have um the two lips as it were at either side when you are scoring to make sure that it stays straight and you're not slipping all over the place also you've got your measurements top and bottom etc okay this one's um i think this one's got that one got centimeters on no this one's got um inches and yeah, it's both the same. So they've got both both got the same measurements on. They're both fantastic. Can't fault them. And like I say, they will last forever. Now, when it comes to scissors, here are my two favourite scissors. Okay, nobody's allowed to touch them but me. I've got more than one pair of these. So it has been a bit of a bane of my life recently to find some long scissors that are that I can cut with. So I'm not snipping 12 by 12s up with my beloved paper snips now these are from stamping up these are the best scissors i've ever used in my entire life so when you're buying scissors it's really important that they're nice and sharp okay especially for fussy cutting and you might not think it matters but the thickness of the blades there on the cutting edge is really really important because it can make a difference between a millimeter of a measurement okay let me show you some some bad purchases that i've made kitchen scissors and then these the name of the company these came from will remain anonymous i used these once they're absolutely useless if you see these don't buy them they look how thick them blades are they're rubbish um kitchen scissors everybody says oh well i, I get mine from the pound shop or dunelm and they're all right but you've got a thick blade okay so these are fiskers they weren't overly expensive they were about 14 pound and the blade there on the cutting edge is super thin and it gives you precision when you're cutting which is really really important and that's why these are really good okay so when you are purchasing scissors look at the reviews talk to other crafters the fiskers are fantastic they're not the cheapest which is why people go for kitchen scissors you know you wouldn't cut your hair with them well, I do, but you shouldn't. <laughs> for the same reason, you shouldn't use them for your paper crafting because you're not going to get precision with kitchen scissors. Okay, so those are my top tips. I'm not telling you what to do. They're just, my, they're just advice from lots and lots of years of experience. So please don't think I'm being rude and go, oh, well, I like using kitchen scissors. Oh, well, I like using PVA. That's up to you. It's your choice. Different people like different things. But I'm just sharing some hints and tips based on lots and lots and lots of lots and lots of hours of crafting and experience. So I hope that they help somebody. And um, so that you, the main reason I want to share is so that you don't waste your money. Because money's hard to come by and we've got to value it. But remember the rule, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. So it's not always economical to buy cheap. Okay? And especially not with glue. Just don't do it. Hope that helps. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.